Amen? But it continues, right? It says, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. What does it mean to keep ourselves unspotted from the world? We're our brother's keeper. We are our brother's keeper, right? If I, if I see my brother fall, I need to tell him, right? Hey, come on. Let's get back up. Let's keep serving the Lord. Amen? I had somebody message me last night that they need help. So I prayed for him. You know, we need to help each other out. Amen? We need to encourage each other out. But it says to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. That means to not want nothing to do with sin. Let me read this again. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. To keep ourselves unspotted from the world is meaning we don't want to do the sinful ways of the world. We don't want nothing that has to do with the world. Amen? We should learn to hate sin. We should learn to want nothing to do with sinful things that everybody's getting caught up in doing. Amen? And you cannot do it in your own strength. We need Jesus Christ. Amen? Heaven and earth. When I was a kid, I remember my mom telling me in Spanish, Portate bien para que vayas al cielo. Meaning, act good so you can go to heaven. Now we know that we cannot act good to go to heaven. We need Jesus Christ. We are not saved by works. Amen? But that brought curiosity to my mind. What is heaven like? Amen? What will heaven be like? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever imagined what heaven's going to be like? You know, maybe you've heard it so much that it's kind of like, it don't catch your attention anymore, right? But, I used to, but when, you have a, when you're a kid, your imagination runs wild, amen? One of the things that I, I would imagine is being able to fly. How many of y'all always imagine being able to fly? I know I do. I used to have dreams that I was flying and I, I would wake up and I really thought I could fly. <laughs> Amen. Um, I heard stories about streets of gold, right? How many of y'all like gold? I like silver, but I like gold too. Amen. The, the Bible says about always looking young. For those that are older now, for us that are older now, I've got to include myself in this. Amen. <laughs> I'm 44 years old. I'm not embarrassed to say my age. But for those that are older now, now that we're older, imagine always looking young. Can y'all imagine what heaven's going to be like? It's going to be a beautiful place, amen? We should be excited. Living forever. That's the greatest, one of the greatest things, right, that we look forward to. To live forever. The new heavens and the new earth, amen? To always, to live forever, never die. Isn't that great? I mean, right now, I wouldn't want to live forever on this earth with everything that's going on around us, with all the pain and suffering, amen? And then we grow older and we have all kinds of problems with our bodies. Uh, it takes me longer to get up in the morning, brother. <laughs> when I get up in the morning... I used to be able to jump out of bed and take off. Now I gotta like take it a little bit slower so I don't hurt myself. But uh, I, I tell my daughter that, and I tell younger people that is like, when you get older, things change. Your body changes, amen? But we won't be old. We'll always be young and we won't die, amen? amen. But the best part, the best part is uh, being able to be with, with uh, God the Father and God the Son. Amen? Amen. Amen? To be able to be with them in their presence. The older I got, the more I began to lose interest in heaven. I would think, who wants to float around on a cloud and play a harp all day? Who wants to do that? That's what I used to think. Why not the drums or an accordion, right? Or an electric guitar. You know, I love the drums. My two favorite instruments is the drums and the accordion. I don't know what your favorite instrument is. What are y'all, some of y'all's favorite instruments? 
trumpet. Piano. The piano. The trumpet. The trumpet. Violin. 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 The violin. Saxophone. All right. The saxophone. Blues. She's got the blues. <laughs> Back there. The what? You like the heart? All right. The shafar. Did I say it right? All right. <laughs> Back there. The piano. All right. And you guys, if y'all know how to play any of these instruments, y'all are more than welcome to come uh, and, and lead out and with these instruments here. Just let us know. But I used to just imagine, okay, we're, I'm just going to sit on the cloud and play a harp all day and all night. What kind of heaven is that, right? But heaven's a lot more than that. Heaven's a lot more than that. The Bible says that we cannot imagine... The, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm... I'm, fra I'm saying that curse right, but it says that there's nothing that our imagination can capture of what heaven will be like. Amen? It's going to be greater than what we, what we, what we read about. Amen? Heaven's going to be an amazing place. And I know I want to be in heaven. The Bible gives us a glimpse, a little bit of what heaven will be like. Amen? But first, let us go to the story of creation of this planet. And that is, of course, in the book of Genesis. Let us go to our Bibles. If you have your Bible, let us turn to our Bibles so we can be blessed by this message. Amen? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. This is creation, right? Genesis chapter 2. And verse 9. Genesis 2 verse 9 says... And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen? The Bible here tells us that God made the garden of Eden, right? He made all kinds of trees with fruit on it for us to eat off of it. Amen? So let's picture these, these trees over here to the side of us. These are all the other trees with fruit. But there's hundreds and thousands of trees with fruit on them, all right? But then it says here, he made two other trees. The tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life, all right? God tells us that he made all the trees with fruits on them. And then he made this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then he made this tree of the tree of life. So y'all keep that in mind, all right? Uh, we could eat off of all of them except this one. We could eat off of this one, and we could eat off of all of the other trees. So here we just read the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And all the other trees with fruit on them. Amen? The first one is called the tree of life. Right here. Right? The second one is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Which tree do you guys think God would want us to eat from? The tree of life. The tree of life. Right? Let us check it out. Genesis 2, 16 through 17. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Right? God wanted us to eat out of the tree of the no God does not want us to eat out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? Because the day that we, we would eat of it, we would die. And that's exactly what happened to Adam and Eve. When they were deceived by the serpent, which was the devil, the devil was on this tree. And he deceived Eve and told her, come check it out. Why don't you want to eat of this? Right? What did Eve say? Well, God said that the day that I eat of it, I will die. And then the devil began to lie to her. You will not surely die, right? So the devil deceived Eve into eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? 
And then Adam followed. That's exactly what happened. They ate from the forbidden tree. The Bible doesn't say what kind of fruit it was. Today we try to say it was an apple. Mango. And it's not an apple. <laughs> Mango. The Bible does not say what kind of fruit it was. Mango. It had to be a very good fruit. What is some of y'all's favorite fruit? I like watermelon. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Mangoes? Bananas? All right. So we, Strawberries. Strawberries. Kiwi. Kiwi? All right. Can I say something? Um, well, you know how it says um, not to eat of the, of the tree of... of uh, the knowledge of the good knowledge, and evil? Yeah. But, you know, as, as the Father commands us to walk in the Spirit, and that you will know each other by the fruits of the Spirit. Yes. So... This, it, it wasn't, it, and people don't understand that the tree of good and evil, it wasn't just good fruits. Yes. You know, because Yah is uh, yeah, because the spiritual, spirit, you know, spiritual, not flesh as we are. Yes, and spiritual talk, um, <coughs> our, our fruits are also um, resemble our actions. Yes, how we So live. you can have good fruits or you can have bad fruits. So yes, that's correct. That's how true. we live, how we talk. We hang out, how we mingle, how Amen. we respond. Amen. Those are fruits. That's why he says, watch well, as well as pray, but you watch what you you're not you're not judging the person, but you can tell the person by their fruits, how they speak, how they react, and how they walk, how they dress. Amen. Yeah. No, it's true. The Bible says that we are not to judge people, right? But the Bible says that there's righteous judgment. Yes. That you will know somebody by their fruits or by their actions. You know, um, God wants us to give us discernment. God wants us to be able to understand, you know, because uh, God doesn't want us to be dumb at the same time and just just believe everything anybody says. But by their actions, by their fruits, you will know that person. Amen? So that's what the Word of God also says. The tree of life, I think, was the Holy Spirit. Amen. As long as, check this out, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil led to death. Because the minute Adam and Eve ate from this tree, a lot of people say, well, they didn't die. Yes, they did. They spiritually died. And not just that, the minute they ate from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they began to grow old. When they began to grow old, what happened to them? They died, right? So God wasn't lying that he told us not to eat from this tree. But the, so the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil led to death. But the tree of life led to what? To life. And this is the tree that we needed to continue to live forever. Amen? If we continue to eat from the, from the tree of, the, of life, we would continue to live forever. And of course, we had all the other trees with the fruit on it as well. Amen? You might be saying, why would we need to eat from the tree of life to continue to live forever? I thought we just needed Jesus Christ. Right? There's a plan. God has a plan for everything, right? God is in control, right? But the Bible, here in a minute we will read that as long as we ate from this tree of life, we would live forever. But they disobeyed. Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and now they had to die. So all Adam and Eve had to do was run back to this tree of life and eat from this tree, and they would continue to live forever. Right? Exactly. But check it out. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Genesis 3.24. Check it out. Genesis 3.24. Let's go to Genesis 3.24. Talking about God. So he drove out man and placed a cherubim at the east of the garden of the Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Amen? Adam and Eve knew that they had sinned. 
They knew that they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and now they were destined to die. Well, they said, well, you know what? All we have to do is run back to the tree of life, eat from this tree, and we'll continue to live forever. But God said, no, you disobeyed me. You disobeyed me, and I told you not to eat from that tree, because the day that you eat of it, you will die. So what did God do? He put a cherubim angel in guarding the tree of life. Amen? Guarding the tree of life so they wouldn't be able to eat from it no more. And they wouldn't be able to live forever. Isn't that crazy? And I will, we'll continue to read here in a minute a little bit more and it will explain this. But it's amazing how important obedience is to God. Amen? It's not just saying, I love you, God. I love you, Father. Right? And we keep all these, all, all his laws, we keep, we keep all his feasts, we keep all these things that he calls us to do, but we're not obedient to him. We don't want change in our life. We don't forsake our sins. Amen? We don't ask God to, to we don't repent of our ways, of our evil ways. We don't learn to hate sin. Amen? What good is it to keep the Sabbath, but you sin like everybody else? You commit adultery all the time. You're an alcoholic. You're, you're a gossiper. You, you mistreat people. You're ugly to people. But yet you keep the Sabbath? What good? Is that going to save you? No. That doesn't mean we don't need to keep the Sabbath or His commandments anymore. That just means we are to repent of our evil ways. We are to forsake our ways to Him. Amen? And He will give us a... a New life. Amen? So, you know, uh, a form of godliness. That's what's happening. There's a form of godliness throughout, throughout the, this world today, right? Throughout this world, there's a form of godliness saying, God, God, I love you. I love you. But your fruits does not show it. Amen? Your ways does not show it. Surrender it all to God. Let, allow him to change you. Is all hope lost though? God the Father loves us so much that he sent his son. We talk about the Father, Father Abba. We talk about our Heavenly Father, Elohim. We talk about the Father. But did you know the Bible says that if we don't talk about his son, we have the spirit of Antichrist in us? It's God the Father and the Son. Amen? It's not just God the Father. We need Jesus Christ. We need Yeshua, amen? So we need the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We don't need to... There's a lot of churches today where they only talk about God the Father. God the Father this, God the Father that. And then there's some other churches that's just Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and not the Father. We need both, amen? We need both. If He's a Father, when you're a Father, you have a son or you have a daughter, right? You're a father of who? Of a son or a daughter. So if we call him God, God the Father, he has to have a child. And that is Jesus Christ. We cannot leave one or, or the other out. Mm -hmm. They come together. Amen? We have God the Father, God the Son. Amen? We have the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, I see it. I've, I've been to many churches. I've been to Messianic churches. Messianic Jewish churches. I've been to Seventh Day Adventist churches. I've been to. I've studied with uh, Jehovah Witnesses. I've been to Baptists. I've been to Pentecostal Assemblies of God. I was raised Catholic. I did. I've done a lot of my research. What each church believes. But we cannot put Jesus. We cannot put the gospel in a box because the Bible is revealing to us all the time. We cannot put. We cannot follow God through a denomination. We got to follow what God has for us through His Word. Amen. And God always reveals things to us. We just got to be willing, and we got to be humble, and not stuck in in the in the routines of how we were raised or what church we go to. Amen. John chapter John chapter three verse sixteen. Verse sixteen. John chapter 3, verse 16. 
It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but should have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. You know, a lot of times we like to quote this verse, but we don't take time to, to, to try to understand what it's telling us. God the Father loves the world so much. He sees what His creation is doing, how we have backslid, how we're going astray, how we're doing our own thing. How we don't listen, right? We don't listen. <laughs> I'm including myself in this. I'm not trying to lift myself up. I'm including myself in this. God the Father loves us so much. He sent His Son, Jesus, to die for you and me. Amen. That whoever believes in Him, the word believe here means to put faith into action. It's not just saying, I believe in you, Jesus, and then living like the devil, amen? amen? Meaning, I believe, when you believe in someone, you follow them, right? When we believe in Jesus Christ, we follow Him. We're obedient to whatever He calls us to do, amen? That is the plan of salvation. Jesus says, don't worry. Check it out. Don't worry. Be happy, right? John chapter 14. A few pages forward. John chapter 14, 1 through 3. John chapter 14, 1 through 3. Let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would go, I would have told you, and I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. God says, don't worry. Yes, this planet has been taken captive by the enemy, which is the devil. Look at all the evil around us. Amen. Kids being molested. Racism, everything that's going on, sicknesses, things that the, the governments of the world are doing behind our backs, all kinds of things that are happening. And today the church is not any different from the people outside of the church. Amen? You know, we go into church, we come out, out of the church with our chest puffed up. We come out and thinking we're holier than the people out there. Thinking we're better than they are. We're not any better. We need God just as much as anybody else needs God. Amen? Amen? Let us not be prideful, but let us be loving. Like sister said here, you know, our actions, our fruits. What are your actions showing? What are your fruits showing? You say you're a believer of God, but you act like the devil? You mistreat people? What are our actions showing? Amen? Says that if it's not for my grace, they're gone. Amen. You know, That's true. Gone. It's very true. He promised to come back. He says he would. He, he went to heaven when after Jesus died on the cross, and then he went through. Uh, he, he, he was he was raised from the grave, and he was still here for a little bit. And then he went up to before he went up to heaven. He told the disciples. He told the people, "I go and prepare a place for you in my Father's house." There's many mansions. So he has a mansion for every single person here. Just your own mansion. Can you believe that? And he's designed it the way you like it. Your desires. Amen? Of course, not worldly desires, but your desires. Amen? He's coming back to take us back with him. So does that mean we will fly? Yes. We will fly. We won't need a spaceship. We won't need a, a space suit. We're going to go past the moon, past the galaxies. We're going to go all the way to heaven. And we're going to be with Jesus. The Bible says that we'll be in heaven for a thousand years. After the thousand years, this, this earth will be restored. We'll come back to this earth and we will be here on this earth for, for, for eternity. This earth will be restored. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9. 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready, and to her was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Amen? So there's going to be a party. There's going to be a celebration, right? There's going to be a wedding that we all look forward to. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? We are the bride, as I mentioned before. Okay, and Jesus comes to take his bride with him. Jesus comes to take his bride with him. And that is those dressed in white, meaning those that have given their lives to God. Amen? doesn't mean that we have to literally be dressed in white. It just means that we have given our lives to God. We're now we're walking in, a, in the ways of God. Amen? God is the one that makes us saints. We can't cleanse ourselves. God cleanses us. He covers us with the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Revelation ch chapter 20, verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he who is part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, that they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with, Christ, with him a thousand years. Amen? We will be in heaven for a thousand years. And then back to this planet made new. Uh, this planet made new. This planet will be restored. Amen. Because the Bible says new heaven and new earth. This earth, before Adam and Eve sinned, this earth was supposed to be heaven here on earth. Amen. But Adam and Eve messed it up, and therefore we're all sinful now. The devil has taken this planet captive. Right. But God is saying, I'm taking this planet back. I'm restoring this earth made new. And I'm giving it back to my people. Amen? Let's go to Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There you go. Now, verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Amen? Amen. No more death, no more crying, no more sickness, no more wearing glasses. No more wheelchairs, no more contacts, no more pain, no more dying. Heaven's going to be an amazing place. Heaven is promised for us. The new heaven and the new earth is promised for us. Amen? I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. We are the bride of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11. Revelation 21, 9 through 11. As we're coming towards the end of this message. Revelation 21, verse 9 through 11. And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, Come, I will show you. I think I'm in the right spot. The bride, the land's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to the great high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like the most precious stone, like jasper stone, clear and crystal. Amen. Amen. The, bride. the new heaven and new earth is going to be amazing. There's going to be streets of gold. The Bible says transparent gold. Do we have transparent gold today? No. It says there's going to be all kinds of precious stones. We're going to have the new Jerusalem. So why do we look to the old Jerusalem today? The old Jerusalem had its purpose here on this earth. Amen? The old Jerusalem was given to God's people, the Israelites. Right? 
But when, uh, y'all remember when the Pharisees and the scribes would come to Jesus and say, we are of Abraham's seed. Saying, we belong to, to, to Abraham's seed. We belong to God's family. And then Jesus told them, I'm able to bring uh, children of Abraham from these rocks. And the Bible also says that if you believe in Jesus, you're Jewish. We're a spiritual Jewish. We're a spiritual Israelites if we believe in Christ Jesus. Amen? So the old Jerusalem was destroyed. That's why Jesus gives us the new Jerusalem. That's what we look forward to, the new Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem had its purpose, but that was destroyed. You know, we can hold on to all these, uh, all these, all these uh, things that we've been, we've been shown, right? But we look forward to the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. Here's the question, though. How we will con how will we continue to live forever in heaven and on the new earth? Y'all remember the story the story earlier that for in order for us to continue to live forever, we had to eat from the tree of life, right? In order for us to continue to live forever, we have to eat from the tree of life. So how are we going to be able to eat from the tree of life? Check it out. Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2. Check it out. The Bible tells us all the answers. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me, this is John in vision. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the middle of the street, check it out. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. Did y'all see that? The tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit. Every month the 12, the leaves of the tree were not, were for the healing of the nations. Amen. Amen? So when we're in the new heaven and the new earth, guess what's back there again? Guess who, what God is bringing back? The tree of life. <coughs> Isn't that amazing? The tree of life was there in the Garden of Eden. But because Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden tree, that tree of life was blocked. They weren't able to eat from it anymore. So now, we live up to 70, 80, 90, and then we die, right? Some people, maybe a hundred, right? And then we die. Because we don't eat from the tree of life. But it says that when we go, when we go to heaven, when we go to the near earth, this tree of life will be there again. For us to continue to eat from this tree and we will continue to live forever. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I don't know if any of y'all have ever heard this message before. I, I, when I first heard it, I was like, wow. You know, I always heard of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that we shouldn't, that they shouldn't have ate from. I always heard of the other trees that bore the fruits that people were to eat off of it. But I had never heard of the tree of life. The tree of life was in the in creation. The tree of life will be at the new heaven and the new earth. That is, a, that is amazing. This tree is back, right? Revelation 22, 3 and 4. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And His servants shall serve Him. They shall see His face and, and His name shall be on their foreheads. You know, in the last days, a lot of people talk about, during the time of the tribulation, we talk about the mark of the beast. But God also seals His people. Did you know that? Amen. God also seals His people. It says that uh, His name will be on our for and His on our foreheads. Amen. Amen. We are representing. We're rep We're uh, we're God's people. That's what it's telling us. Our last verse. And there's a lot more that I left out, but God's word is powerful. There is so much for us to learn from His word and how it blesses us. Amen. 
Revelation 22, verse 7. Behold, I am coming quickly. Who's this talking? Is this God the Father talking or Jesus Christ? This is Jesus Christ talking because the letters are in red. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And what book is it talking about? The book of Revelation. Amen? So the book of Revelation doesn't have to be scary all the time. That's all we think about it. In the beginning of the, of the, of the book of Revelation, it says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Everything that's in the Bible, it all points, it all, it's always uplifting God. It's uplifting Jesus. Amen? And He's just warning us. He's giving us warnings because just as parents, we want to warn our children. So Jesus warns us of the things that are to come because He wants us to not be deceived like Adam and Eve were deceived and how we continue to be deceived with all the sinful ways in this world, right? We don't want to follow traditions. We don't want to follow routine. We don't, follow, we don't want to follow a denomination. We want to follow what the Word of God has for us. Amen? Even if, it's, even if it says something different than what you're used to. Amen? We want what God has for in His Word. We look forward to the new Jerusalem, not the old Jerusalem. Amen? If the old Jerusalem was amazing, can you imagine how more amazing the new Jerusalem will be like? But most importantly, Jesus Christ will be there and God the Father will be there. Amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Brother Rick, if you can get that last CD ready. The same one from... <coughs> Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I believe it's in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. It says that the Holy Spirit will reprove us. The Holy Spirit will convict us. The Holy Spirit will lead us to truth. That's in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. That's what the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will do. When we hear from preachers, the Holy Spirit, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit, and they start shaking on the ground and speaking gibberish, babbling back and forth, and knocking people down on the floor. That's not the Holy Spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, I hope y'all are awake now. <laughs> the Holy Spirit reproves us. The Holy Spirit will convict us. The Holy Spirit will show us what truth is. Amen. So I put, I, I pray that you guys put it into prayer. That you want to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit will wake us up too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If any of you have uh, thought about being baptized. <coughs> And because uh, the Bible says, you want to honor my resurrection? The Bible says, be baptized. Repent and be baptized. Be born again, right? So if you have, if it's been put in your heart that you want to be baptized, simply raise your hand wherever you're at. And we can talk to you after church. And we can make plans to for you guys to be baptized. We can do it either here at the church or if you want to do it at the lake wherever you guys would like to. If the Holy Spirit is leading you to want to be baptized. Excuse me, do you guys, if you do it in the church, is it running water or is it just still water? It is still water. Okay. Yes. I'm asking for somebody else. All right. Yes, and uh, when we are baptized, we're baptized into the family of God. We're not baptized into a denomination of church. <laughs> You know, our bow is, you know, they when when they were baptizing people in the Bible, they didn't say, okay, now you belong to the Baptist church. <laughs> or they didn't say, now you belong to the SDA church or whatever church, right? No, we are baptized into the family of God. Amen. Amen. We're adopted into the family of God. So if you have, if it's in your heart to want to be baptized, if you're watching online and you feel the desire to want to be baptized, Get with me and my wife, and we'll make plans to, to make that happen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that you show us, Lord. Help us to be obedient, and help us to, to desire to follow you, Lord. 
all the way, even if it's not popular, Lord. Help us to serve you and help us to forsake our sins and bring them to you, Lord. You paid for our sins. Your son paid for our sins on the cross. All we have to do is believe and repent of our ways. Lord, come to our hearts. Be with us. And be with us as we go to the park and fellowship together. And uh, we just have a great time, Lord. Help us to uh, follow you no matter what. And help us to show the good fruits and not the bad fruit. Help us to have good religion and not bad religion, as you mentioned in James. Lord, thank you for everything that you do for us. And be with us. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This concludes our service. We will see everyone here next Saturday at 11 a.m. We will go to the park right now, here in a minute, as we wrap everything up. And uh, we brought extra food. If you didn't bring any food and you still want to join us, feel free to come with us. All right, come with us. Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope it is blessing for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.